had our SWOPE telescope, our one meter telescope, began looking in that general region, we actually found a pinpoint of light at the same location, a new point of light on the sky that had not been there before. And after looking through the records of maybe it could be an asteroid moving by or maybe a supernova that hadn't been discovered before, we quickly realized that we had actually seen something actually turning on, something exploding at that same location that LIGO had found. And we were able to locate this in this galaxy. There was a lot going on. <laughs> it was probably the, the busiest and most stressful um, you know, start to a night that, that I've had. Usually when you're on a big telescope, everything should be just laid out and prepared very carefully. And like, there should be like no that many surprises or excitement. It should be a pretty boring experience because you make mistakes and they're so expensive that you don't want to make any mistakes. But on this, it happened so fast that I was just like, everything you're about to see on a big telescope, like you should never do that. <laughs> never be exciting. It should always be like, like pr prepared out. You should have like multiple targets. Like, oh, if this target fails, I go to this target immediately and have this plan laid out the whole time. That's uh, exactly what this was not that night. It was a Thursday and I was here at the office and actually it's the middle of the afternoon here in California, but it was almost the start of the night in Chile. And I get um, a G chat from Ben Chaffee, who's another postdoc here, and with a lot of exclamation points. This really made us think we had an opportunity to find something for the first time. And this is why we were so excited to get on the telescope and look. I found out quickly that Las Campanas, our observatory, was going to be the first observatory that would have a chance to find any light coming from this source. When you get a gravitational wave source, um, even one with LIGO and Virgo, the error circle, so the, the area on the sky that the source could be coming from is still quite large. Um, we knew from uh, LIGO that, from the LIGO alert, that it was actually pretty close. So then you can narrow it down to just, um, just nearby galaxies. The plan that was eventually settled on um, after a lot of discussion was that all three telescopes, both Magellan's and the SWOPE, uh, would, uh, would start off doing imaging of, uh, of galaxies in which this event could have occurred and trying to find uh, the, the exact spot where it was. It was still going to be hard because in particular the direction that LIGO told us this was coming um, we were going to be able to find it first from Las Campanas Observatory, but it was only going to be visible for about an hour. So we had an hour of time total. Our collaborators at Santa Cruz were scrambling to put together lists for us of where to point the telescopes. People at Santa Cruz, like Dave Coulter and then Ryan Foley, uh, basically made this list and then prioritized it by where it was most likely to be. Ben and Josh were observing on the two Magellan telescopes, and we decided we were going to use all three to try to look for it, to do things faster. So um, all three people had a list of galaxies that they were going to point it to. We got an email from um, one of our collaborators that basically had the subject line, candidate exclamation point. And it said, Charlie, who is a postdoc at the University of California, Santa Cruz, has found something. A lot of our competitors were all searching in the infrared, um, uh, the ones who could. And it was, it was funny that we found it from a small telescope in the optical uh, first. And so we ended up finding the event roughly 11 hours after it was first announced. Swope found the first optical light from a neutron star-neutron star merger, from any gravitational wave source that LIGO has found. 